Good afternoon. Thank you so much for tuning in today uh, for this devotion, this lesson, this study. I want to go over the effects of sin. Uh, the effects of sin. Now, now, the reason why I want to talk on the effects of it is in Scripture it says that for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Uh, sin is something that we all face, something that we all struggle with in some form or another. Um, some people have you know, one or two sins, some people have multiple, but the effects of it, uh, what brings about sin. And if you turn to your Bible, uh, to Psalm 38, it's godly sorrow for sin. That's what it's outlined in my Bible here. And it says, a Psalm of David to bring to remembrance. Uh, the remembrance of the effects of sin. So if you follow along with me in Psalm uh, 38 here. O Lord, rebuke me not in thy wrath, neither chasten me in thy hot displeasure. For in thine arrows stick fast in me, and thy hand passes me sore. I don't know, I'm going to pause here in verse 2 here. I don't know if you've ever been around somebody that you didn't want to let down, that you didn't want them to be displeased with you, uh, to be angry with you. Uh, I know growing up, uh, many people might you know, blame their mother, their father, and I want to upset them. Well, mine was my grandmother. Uh, she was uh, Nana. If you've ever listened to any lessons or anything on here, um, she was one of the people growing up that I did not want to let down. And, and with her, when I let her down, it, it made me feel awful. Well, when God does that, it's the same displeasure. You know, the, the soundness, the joy, your happiness, uh, all of that is burdened. And then David faced that. And, you know, he says, restore the joy of the salvation you know, put back a right spirit within me and other psalms. When the Lord here is rebukes him in his wrath and in his anger, it is it is almost as if he's he's pierced in his heart for it. So and then arrows stick fast. That so it's 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 deep. The arrows hit him deep, and it says it presses me sore. Verse three, it says there is so there is no soundness. In my flesh, because of thine anger, neither is there any rest in my bones because of my sin. Now, if you want to, I don't know if you underline, underline your Bibles, but underline my sin. And here the psalmist says that he understands that it is because of his own doing that is causing him all of these things. It says it is my sin. Um, the trouble that we face throughout our Christian life is we don't acknowledge that it's us. And we often, you know, want to point a finger and saying it's this other person. But in this psalm, he says, my sin. For mine iniquities, so he's again showing that it's his, his iniquities are gone over mine head. So if you think of it, so much sin that, it, that it's actually above it, more, more than he's able to handle. Uh, like in water, for example, many people that can't swim, they're fine as long as it you know, goes up to their waist or even their stomach. Um, but when it goes over them, that's when you have to you know, swim or get to a shallower end. And he says, the sin is going above my head, which means I'm, I'm sinking in a sense because of my sin. And it continued in verse 4, it says, And his heavy burden are too heavy for me. So he says that his sin is too much for him to, to deal with. And then verse 5, it says, And my wombs stink and are corrupt because of my foolishness. Now it says it is wombs. It, so it, his sin caused issues to his life. I uh, know no, many people's sins, there's effects of sin. Many people's sins, for example, that you could use would be the sin of lying. You lie to somebody and the repercussion of that 
could end up that they don't trust you. They don't rely on you. And, and anything that you say after that, they, they don't believe you. They don't acknowledge you. You could have a sin of, I don't know, you, you cheat on somebody. You're, you're not faithful to them. And that sin is a distrust and that love relationship and you're wounded and your heart and everything is grieved. But sin causes wounds of distrust, of, of self-doubt, of anger, of, of all of these things that sin can do. It can bring about results and effects. And he's saying that my wounds stink and are corrupt because of my foolishness. My foolishness. I know better, and yet I still sin. It's, it's folly not understanding that, that I've let my sins get to this much. It's foolishness that, that I'm you know, allowing all of this to happen. And it says, I am troubled, and I am bowed down greatly. I go mourning all the day long. So this sorrow for what his sin is, the effects of his sin... It's not temporary. It, it is, carries him all day long. Uh, many times that you sin in your life, it affects you daily. Uh, some people carry their sin of what they've done and the repercussions of that. Um, they, they keep with them all the day long. It, it is almost as if it's like a, a clothing or something that they wrap themselves in. So we hit to verse 7, and it says... For my loins are filled with a loathsome disease, and there is no soundness in my flesh. I am feeble and sore, broken. I've heard my reason of this quietness of my heart. So it says that he is feeble. It means that he's, he's, he's lost strength and that he is sore, broken. So this weighed on him, and it just it just kind of broke him. It's just like you know, the strength that I had, the you know the ability that I had, it, it's just it's shattered. And then in verse nine, he he confronts and he says, "Lord, all my desire is before Thee, and my groaning is not hid from Thee." So, so he's he's saying, "Lord, I've made known my anguish." And you can hear it in, in his voice. He said, you know, I'm broken. I'm weary. I, you know, I carry this. Lord, and it, it even, he says, my heart panteth. Verse 10, and my strength faileth me. For the light in my eyes is so, is gone from me. My heart painteth. That, that, that means that it is, something of nervousness it, it is something that you know that it's just it's beating constantly and it says that my strength faileth me verse 11 this very sad it says my lovers and my friends stand aloft from my sore now my lovers here is not talking about like a relationship of lovers is is that's just the people that he loves loved ones in a sense and my friends stand afar off from my sore so the people that i love and my friends and the people that are supposed to help me during this time is away from me and then it goes on to even more and it says and my kinsmen stand afar off so he is without loved ones He's without friends and he's without family. And too often sin brings us here. And within my heart in the last few years, I've had kind of a burden for people that are struggling uh, from addiction and various things. They face this struggle that I'm reading to you here. Many times that they've, that they've sinned and they've, they've done things and they've hurt family and they've caused so much struggle, oftentimes the, the drug or the drink or whatever keeps the emotions at bay. And then there's certain times in their life that they look back and then they said, Lord, this is just too much for me to bear. 
and, and they feel almost alone and they're isolated um, as if they're wandering this world alone and they're, they're like, you know, the people that I love, the friends that I thought that I had and even my family are not here. And they, all of this sin is, is brokenness and, and Lord, all I have is you. If you've ever went through this, just let me continue to read here. And, and then this, this 38 in Psalms should help you out. Uh, it helped me out greatly in, in reading this. And in this it says, in verse 12, it says, They also that seek after my life, they lay snares for me, and they that seek hurt, speak mischief or mischievous things, and imagine deceits all the day long. The people that are that he loves, his friends and his family is a far off. But those that are causing him harm, it seems as if they're right there within arm's reach. And it, and it kind of leads him on to, to sin more. But I as a deaf man, and this is verse 13. But I as a deaf man heard not, and I was dumb man that openeth not his mouth. Thus I was a man that heareth not, and I was a mouth in whose mouth. Let me read that verse 14 again. Thus I was a man that heareth not, and whose mouth are no reproofs. That, that's, it's, what it's saying here is I wouldn't listen. When somebody would tell me and they would try to help me and correct it, I was like a deaf man. I don't know if you've ever tried to reason with somebody that's in, in deep sin. It is almost, they turn a deaf ear to you and you can plead to them and you can try to reason with them and everything and it is almost as if they won't hear reproof, they won't hear correction, they won't hear you're going down the wrong way, you're going through it and he's like a deaf man. And then in verse 15 it says, For in thee, O Lord, do I hope. Thou wilt hear me, O Lord my God. So he sees that his friends has abandoned him, as his kinsmen, you know, his family. But he says, Lord, you'll hear me. You'll, you'll be there for me. Uh, for I said, hear me, lest otherwise they should rejoice over me when my foot slippeth and they magnify themselves against me. He understands of his shortcomings with sin. He understands how quickly that he is to fall into sin. For I am ready to halt in my sorrow continually before thee, or before me. For I will declare my iniquity, and I will be sorry for my sin. But mine enemies are lively, and they are strong, and they that hate me wrongfully are multiplied. They also that render evil for good are mine adversaries, because I follow the thing that good is. So when you're trying to come out and do the right thing, he's saying, my enemies are lively and that they are strong, and they that hate me wrongfully are multiplied. When you try to do good, there is an adversary against you, uh, trying to keep you down. And he is saying that they're, re they're receiving... Verse 20, that they that are render evil for good are mine adversaries because I follow the things that good is. So he said, I'm trying to do good and the adversary is rendering evil for that. So forsake me not. And I think that this is the highlight of this whole verse. People have forsaken me. I know it's because of my sin. He's not acknowledging that it's not him. He's saying, I've done it. I, I've done this. You know, all the sin heaping above my head and the, the sins that I had is just too much. And I was like a deaf man to them. But he's asking the Lord here. He says, forsake me not, O Lord, O my God. Be not far 
from me because I'm going to have to call on you later on. Many people that are going through struggles, going through sins, going through addiction, for example, he need somebody close. And he's saying, Lord, don't be afar off. Even when I get through my sin and all the things and I get my life together, I still need you here near me because I know that you will not forsake me. So let's read one more passage here. Make haste to help me, O Lord, my salvation. And at the last bit of this, he's pleading for help. He says, make haste, uh, be quick to help me, O Lord, my salvation. Be quick. We don't understand what sin somebody goes through. When we look at somebody passing by and you know shopping or bumping shoulders with, we don't understand what burdens, what sin resides in them, what paths that they've done in their life, who's forsaking them, who's left them alone, who their adversary is, who's you know pushing them to do can you know to continually to do evil. We don't know what they are in their relationship with God. Do they cry out to him? Do they cry out to anybody? Uh, do they feel alone? Do they feel isolated? This Psalm 38 explains what somebody that is a Christian when they wrestle with sin. Uh, now this, understanding this, that it is not just sinful people that, that deal in, you know, with addiction and different things. There is Christians that have veered off and, and get pulled into sin. And, and, and sin kind of goes above them. Now, the sin that they do can be forgiven. 1 John 1, 9 is there. You know, for you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So it is not that a Christian cannot sin, but sometimes sins of a person does, if they get too far away, can become so much for them. And even Christians can turn a deaf ear to the people that are trying to help them. So what's laid on my heart is to help people that are in need, just like David here is explaining in Psalm 38. So if you're going through a rough time, if you're dealing with sin and you're pleading to God and you feel as if you're alone, you're not. David here explains it fully in 38 and he says, Lord, come quickly and help me. There's a lot of things that men can do and they can try to help. But David here says that he's asking him because God is there during the times when you need him the most, the times that you feel pushed to sin and you don't want to. So my prayer for you is that we would understand that we're all can relate to 38. Many of us visit there when we sin, but many people live daily, as that psalm says, and many people face sin and they struggle with it daily. So we need to pray for those. Pray that they lean towards God and ask help from them. We shouldn't abandon how this person felt, forsaken by loved ones, forsaken by friends, forsaken by family. We should be there even though they turn a deaf ear. But I pray that you have a better understanding of somebody that is suffering from sin. For we all have been there and some still are. So God bless you for listening to this. Pray for those that, that need help. And thank you so much again for listening and taking the time to hear Psalm 38. God bless you.